especially this, you know, in this day and age. But um, I can't bring it to you in a basket, you know. And, and I think, you know, and, and this has happened a couple of times. I mean, even before the the ubiquitous nature of the internet and it being, you know, God, you know, Google, who'd have thunk you could, you know, at your fingertips, you know, find information on pretty much anything. Um, but I do remember, you know, several years ago when the whole discussion about building the jail, you know, was coming along, um, there were meetings every month, every, yeah, I don't know, but I know that, that the TCTV staff covered a dozen public meetings about the jail. A dozen. We're talking like 30 hours of programming. And I was watching a city, I can't remember when that was, it was like 10 years ago, something like that. I was watching a city council meeting and there was, there was or a county commission meeting and that we also covered. Um, and there was um, somebody in the audience or in the, who came to the podium who said, this is the first time I've heard of this. And all I could think of was, have you been living under a rock? Because the Olympian carried it, KGY News carried it, we had 30 hours on it, they talked about it at every public, I mean, it was all over the place. And I, you know, so there's a point at which as a consumer of information, you have to take responsibility for seeking it out um, because it doesn't matter I mean if Jerry had 500 reporters to work with I'll guarantee that somebody would stand up and say why isn't somebody covering XYZ because the answer can, would be did you see Wednesday's newspaper <laughs> and they would say well yeah. I don't get the newspaper <laughs> so, like, well, you know, so now I, I don't mean to shake my finger at you I really don't but you know I, it's like there is you know I do think that to some extent, and we're not a news agency, you know, but I get this all the time. Well, why didn't you guys cover the press conference about the, um, you know, the, the uh, soon to be extinct African violet down by the lake? And I'm like, well, excuse me, I didn't even hear about that one. You know, I mean, we get that kind of stuff a lot. And the, I mean, truly, it does boil down to limited resources and having to make choices. And sometimes the choices anybody at this panel makes relative to how we allocate the resources are not going to jive with where you think we should allocate those resources. Um, so, you know, we do our best, or at least I, I hope we do our best, but sometimes it's, it really is going to be incumbent upon the people who need the information to try to find sources for the information that may not be your local newspaper, that may not be your community access channel, you really, you may just have to go look for the information uh, from other sources. Okay, at this point, um, I want to recognize and honor Walt Jurgensen, who is our camera person. Yes. And Walt is, Walt is this thing for the benefit of the community, recorded many, many public meetings some of which he was not appreciated and not fully welcomed <laughs> at, but he did it anyway because Try he is part of Weaver Media. Uh, yes, yes. Um, and then he puts them on YouTube. Okay, yeah. puts Google them on, on YouTube. <laughs> and but what I want to do is sort of wrap it up by asking everybody to give like one thing that you at your media can do to that you are thinking of doing or that you have just thought right now that maybe that's something I should try that would make you more effective at carrying out your mission of, of informing people and, and making the news available. Well, I feel a little weird being up here because we're not a news organization. Honestly, we're an entertainment venue that carries local information and local interest. So your mission is to inform people about goings on and, and our, so our mission is to entertain people, make them happy, comfortable, and that includes some content, some information content. But really our mission is really more about creating a warmth in the community, about trying to gather people together. It's not about reporting on things, it's not about news, it's not saying we don't do that sort of thing, but one of the things about media such as ours, we're an entertainment station, and uh, a perfect example of this, I'll tell you, when the first Gulf War happened, in, in the first invasion, that was the first year we'd been on the air, and most of us came from a journalism background, and we immediately jumped on it, started reporting news, and getting all the information we could, and people called us in droves and said, please, please, 
please. There's, everyone's doing that. Don't, don't. Just tell us if something big happens and we can go to the news station and find that out. Please, give us something else. Give us what's going on here in Olympia. I don't want to hear about this now. I can go get that a lot of other places. And that was a big lesson for all of us. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the senior news is much of a news source either. We only come out once a month. It's more educational. A lot of the articles are how you can get access to certain programs, how you can, like I was just looking at the front page of last month's paper, where do you dump your prescription drugs when you have them laying around, or um, you know, how do you deal with your energy bills. Um, we don't have any reporters. Um, the community sends stuff to me, and uh, um, we will. Or a venue. Um, I'll go out and take pictures and talk to somebody, but uh, I do depend on the community to email me. And unfortunately, most of this stuff, I wouldn't say most, a lot of the things I get are going to happen now before the end of the month. Uh, the April paper went to press. It's printing tonight, right now. Um, so any news emails that I get, this we've got in the last couple days and next week, can't go in because I only go on once a month. So uh, the community does have to get stuff to me and in a, in a timely fashion. <laughs> what you're going to do, what do you think you could do to improve your coverage of local news or just providing your service to the public? Um, I think um, one thing I've noticed, just as a, I was a reader of Works in Progress for a long time, longer than I've been a writer, um, and I think I really took for granted the fact that it was there in the first place, along with a lot of other free that we have in Olympia, I was just like, that's so great. There must be like, a, you know, a few dozen people working on it. No, it's actually like under 10, sometimes <laughs> two. And so I think one thing that we could do, maybe some of the other community-run newspapers um, and media outlets, is just like better outreach in terms of letting people know that they can use this um, to, you know, write about, um, stories that they don't feel are being covered or whatever, or write about a new perspective, um, and trying to maybe empower community members more to uh, utilize those resources that are available to them, I think is something we can work on. Well, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody here, and what, it, what brought me into this business was people, people are interesting, information is interesting, somebody else knows it I want to know it and I'd like to know it as soon as somebody else knows it um, I, I would like to get out in the community more I'm behind my desk a lot I'd also like to mention just in general that we have a reporter and a photographer in Afghanistan right now embedded with Fort Lewis units the striker units and uh, please keep them in your thoughts that's a very dangerous uh, enterprise for them to be on right now I think is the the idea I've heard that strikes me the most is the notion of reminding people, and it's always been there, but reminding people that they could write for us. You periodically say, "Hey, we're, you know, we're always looking for new writers," and and maybe being more blunt about the fact that you can pitch stories to us. And people, we do get press releases, or or we get calls sometimes from somebody saying. Well, would you be interested in receiving a press release from us about something that we might be doing? <laughs> yeah! Uh, yes! You know, I can't guarantee you're going to write a story on it, but at least tell us about it. I think, I'll, I'll re I'll repeat something Jerry said a couple of times, at least tell us. Come to us, and then maybe we need to do a better job. Maybe even on the page three, we just always have a standard thing. Send us your story ideas um, every single time. Otherwise, there are very few ways that we can tell what people are interested in. We do look at the website stats. You know, we know which, for us, it's a combination of the, the kind of the most, more interesting in-depth news stories and the music stories and the Fort Alley single. Those are the three things that rise to the top for us. So it's, you know, it's a mixture of that hard news and goofy stuff. But emphasize, re-emphasize to people that they can send us their story ideas. Well, I'd like to invite you all to be Become part of TCTV. We're we're your community television channels, and we're you know here to provide services to you. 
training on how to use video and media production equipment, very low cost classes. We are planning this year a major technology upgrade. Um, don't tell anybody. <laughs> by this time next year, we'll, by this time next year, our production facilities will be all high definition. So that's very exciting. However, our channels won't be. So there's a little disconnect. I don't know. We're working. We'll work with Comcast on that. Um, so I mean, I mean, what you what you see on Channel 22 specifically, the public access channel, is what the community puts there. Um, so if you find it frustrating that there's you know one more faith-based program than you'd like to see, if you're not there doing something to counteract that or to you know do some other kind of programming that, you know, the people who come through the door who create the programming who bring it to us, um, that's what's on that channel. Uh, and we are doing our best to do outreach. Um, I tell folks, you know, the door is always open. Sometimes we might have to send a taxi to pick you up, but the door is there. So, you know, please walk through and uh, be a part of what we have to have we are doing. I want to digress just for a second because I think it's really important in, in, for, for the electronic people at the table here um, pay attention to what happens in the next Congress, you know, after the election, relative to telecom rewrite. Um, the broadcast and radio and television and cable law is based on the Radio Act of 1939. That's where it started. It's been a patchwork of everything ever since. And they're, they're, we're he I'm hearing people who do what I do are hearing buzz that there may be an attempt to rewrite a more globally looking uh, kind of um, national, federal legislation to govern media as it has evolved. And that could be huge because if you look at the FCC's website and you look at their strategic plan, they you know, chopped out their strategic goals, never once does it say citizen, but several places it says consumer. And I think that we need to be very careful that we insist to our elected officials that public interest come before corporate interest when it comes to the use of public airwaves and public rights of way and that the public interest be protected. So keep your eyes out for that.